Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amit. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a demo. How to read uncommitted rows from SQL Server table. Sometimes we call them dirty records or dirty reads. So why we need to use that? First of all, I'm going to give you some scenarios where we need to use that. Let's say you are updating a lot of records in small batches in your SQL Server table and you want to see the progress, you want to take a look on that update or maybe you are deleting a lot of records from a table and you want to take a look on the record count how many records are deleted and still the transaction is open and the records are not committed yet but you just want to um, read some records or maybe counts or one of the uh, SSIS package that is reading some data from a source and loading into SQL Server table and uh, you want to see the progress uh, how many records are loaded into the table even they are not committed yet so you want to take a count and see the progress so those are different things you want to consider uh, or you, you need to read uh, the dirty records. Maybe there could be another scenario where uh, you need to update or delete some records uh, in the uh, uh, SQL Server table and uh, before even committing that transaction uh, you want to go ahead and uh, take a look uh, uh, if uh, the uh, script uh, ran uh, or work uh, as expected or not. So you want to re read the data and uh, from the table and then uh, commit the transaction after that. So different scenarios can be there where you can use that. So how you can do it? We can always use uh, with no lock hint uh, to read the dirty data or uncommitted data from SQL Server table or tables. So let's go to the SSMS and perform a demo. Now what I have here, I have a DDL statement to create a table. So we are creating a table called DBO table customer and then we have ID, name and region columns and I'm inserting three records but I'm inserting two records with null values for region. So let's insert the records and now select the data from the table. We see that there are two records with null values. Before I go ahead, uh, I want to update these records with some other region value and uh, before I go ahead, I want to show you something. So we run this DBCC user options. So run this one and we see one of the um, configuration is called isolation level read committed. So that tells us uh, SQL Server it will return us only the committed data. So there are different types of isolation. First of all, isolation is a is a way to tell one transaction or how much it is isolated from other transactions which are making data modification. So. Uh, we have a snapshot, we have a repeatable, we have a, a serializable and uh, th th there is a you know, read uncommitted as well. So you can set uh, the transaction uh, la uh, isolation level uh, to different, uh, sorry, you can set uh, the isolation level uh, for your batch or a uh, session uh, to different isolations such as if I want to set to uh, isolation level to read uh, uncommitted I can do for this entire session or uh, for the batch uh, or set of queries I want to run after that so I can do it but here we are gonna not change the isolation level for our session or for the uh, queries uh, for the batch of the queries or maybe a set of queries what we want to do we want to use use some different approach to read the uncommitted data. By default, a SQL Server uh, isolation level is set to read committed. So it is going to only return us committed records. So if uh, I'm going to update records, let's say I'm updating the table and I'm saying set region to NA North America where region is null. If I will run this part, it is going to go ahead and run without uh, any delay. It will start the transaction, commit it right away. But uh, I have written a begin transaction here. So I want to start a transaction, but I don't want to commit it. So I have explicitly written this keyword here so I can start and wait for commitment whenever I want to do it. So let's run this one. Now the transaction is uh, started and if uh, I will go on the new query, let's uh, close this one, let's go a new query and if we'll take the select statement from here, 
run the select statement here what is going to happen it is going to keep running or keep spinning because the transaction is open and it, the data is not committed yet so it will not return us any records as the isolation level for sql server is set to read committed so that's one reason it will keep running as the transaction is open and that is not committed yet but we are interested to read the data even it is not committed so what we can use we can use with the no lock hint to read that information execute the statement now it return us the uncommitted data as committed as well so we can see the entire data from the table and with the using no lock hint uh, still uh, the transaction is not completed so if uh, somebody goes back and roll back the transaction let's say they decided okay no the transaction uh, this uh, is not working the way they expected so they want to roll back the transaction if they roll back it and somebody come back here and rerun the select query and uh, oh they will say a region code was NA now somebody has uh, um, updated to the null no nobody updated to the null it was there was a transaction and you were using with the no lock hint and that's why you were getting uncommitted information and somebody decided that is not the way that they want to do the update so they rolled it back so make sure you don't want to use the with no lock all the time there should be some special scenario where you don't care uh, if the transaction is committed or rolled back whatever the data you get it you just want to dump it maybe for test purpose or something you can use this one but if you are interested to create a report maybe you don't want to use these ones because if the transaction is open you let it wait it is okay to wait it because you want to produce the correct information if the transaction rolled back due to some information and you have ran the report with no lock you are providing the wrong information to the clients so you want to take care of those scenarios and use where you really need to use it and understand the concept behind it now let's go back begin the transaction again now if we use the this with the no lock we'll see okay we it is showing us na and all that so let's uh let's run this one for now without no lock so it is keep running and running and once uh, anyways we commit the transaction it will uh, show us uh, the records without without even using the no lock hint so it return us those records now let's consider another scenario we want to say begin trend and we want to say delete from table from this table let's delete one record and say let me see where region is equal to Asia so we know that there is one record for Asia so let's uh, run the query and we see there is one record for Asia so if I will uh, begin a transaction and I want to delete the record let's run this one so one record deleted is not deleted yet uh, because we didn't commit the transaction so it's not deleted so let's go and run our select query if we select the query what we see here it is running and running because the transaction is open so we can't really see any record let's close this one and if I run with no lock hint so it should return us the records now it is returning us two records because the third one is uh, uh, deleted and we are reading the dirty records or uncommitted data so uh, it is returning us all the records of whatever uh, right now it is committed or uncommitted so we see all of them right now with this transaction as we have deleted the record so that record is uh, um, not available and uh, it is uh, right now it's not committed yet as well and also the with the as we are using uh, with no lock it is returning us information without that record so if I will go ahead and stop this query it is already stopped so if I will take this out and just run the select so it will keep running running and if I will just commit the transaction now 
So what happened? Now this query came back with the actual results or committed data. So uh, that's how you will be able to see the uncommitted data by using with the no lock hint. So this is really helpful sometime. Let's say in this case, I was doing some uh, deletes. I want to see what is the effect of delete. Uh, I was doing some update and I want to see the, what is the effect of uh, that update. So by reading that uncommitted uh, data, it was helpful in a way. Uh, so I can prepare my queries and test that queries. Um, it could be a great in the dev or uh, SIT or QA environment where uh, I need to write these queries for my production or UAT. I can and prepare those queries and uh, I don't have to reload data every time if I'm feeling like okay my transaction uh, or my query is not working as expected I could roll back and uh, rewrite query and uh, that's how I can uh, you know uh, prepare my scripts but once I commit it I have to reload the data to the table to test it again so by using with no lock hint it, it helps sometime to write your queries and test them and you can roll back and uh, uh, keep writing uh, your queries so thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in next video